Well, day one of the NHL draft is officially in the books. I'm Katie Gauze for USHL TV, joined by Ben Gislason and Jack Molesky. Now, guys, it was an exciting day for the USHL, breaking a record with nine picks in that first round. However, getting the party started was none other than Jack Hughes going first overall to the New Jersey Devils. Was there really ever any doubt? Well, I think the moniker I've been hearing was the year of the American. And so what a better way to start it than with Jack Hughes. And definitely some discrepancy there leading up into the draft a little bit, but it didn't seem like a lot of the murmurings were all that into uh, Capo Caco. It was really about Hughes coming into this draft, and it remained so. And so I don't think it was any big surprise to anyone's ears when he got his name called. Well, Team USA cleaned up early in this first round. Seven picks in the first 15 selected, including what we had Alex Turcott, Matthew Boldy, Cole Caulfield, Trevor Zegras, and Spencer Knight. Who was the first goalie to go off the board? It's exciting for him. Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, taking a goalie at 13 overall, some might say it's a risk, but Spencer Knight has been talked about as one of the most sure things in between the pipes for a, a long time. So when you look at Spencer Knight, yes, it's a risk taking that goalie, but I think he's proven that he has the pedigree, that he has the mental game. That's the big key with a goaltender at the next level. And I think Spencer Knight's going to prove a lot of people wrong who are doubting him. Um, he's going to make a lot of people happy in Sunrise. Now we saw John Beecher jump up the ranks a little bit and sneak in there with that 30th overall pick going to Boston. What are your thoughts on that? What were the Bruins looking for with that pick? One word, wheels. This kid can flat out fly. I know Jack, you and I were talking before the draft about Beecher a little bit and the one thing that popped up when he popped up so surprisingly was first thing you said is speed. Uh, this kid can really get up and down the rink with some gusto. So Boston looking for that clearly and, and talking to, to John, he's obviously excited to join an original six team and a team that has had so much success recently in the NHL. Absolutely. All right, well last but not least we had Ryan Johnson of the Sioux Falls Stampede coming in at 31st overall from the Sabres. What can they expect to see from this kid? Well, when we're talking about the NTDP and all the flash, all the skill that they have, it's not that Ryan Johnson doesn't have skill, but what you can expect from him is a lot of dependability. Sioux Falls exuded dependability with that entire team, and I think Ryan Johnson on the back end was the epitome of why that team won the Clark Cup this year. He's just a very solid defenseman, and so I think with the Buffalo Sabres, you have a really exciting young offensive defenseman in Rasmus Dahlin. Now you add a guy like Ryan Johnson who can bolster that back end, sprinkle in some points, but really keep the offensive threats on the other team in check. Absolutely, and now we heard a lot of names from our league, but we still have a lot of guys that are waiting in the rafters, right? We have Bobby Brink, Igor Afanasyev, uh, Mastro Simone. These are all names that are definitely going to be heard in day two. And a lot of names we expect. You know, last year was such a great showing. This year was about the first round. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm really excited for tomorrow with the names like you mentioned, the Mastro Simones, the Afanasyevs, the Brinks, the guys that really lit up this league this year that have so much talent and have so much to offer. So, And all very different players, too. I think tomorrow we're going to see a lot of players that are going to fill a lot of different roles for the respective teams that they're drafted by. So it's going to be a wonderful day. All right, well, we'll wrap it up. What are you most looking forward to tomorrow? What, what player excites you heading into day two? Well, you mentioned three players that are all exciting in their own right. I think Bobby Brink surprised everyone with how far he shot up the draft boards. Irof and Asayev goes from a fourth liner one year to almost a first round pick. I think he's just on the fringe. A guy I'm looking at is none of the three we just mentioned, though. I like Marcus Kelly and Kelly to go late second, early third. He played on a line with Bobby Brink. He's a pure sniper on that Sioux City team, and I think he'll be a dependable goal scorer for whoever decides to take him tomorrow. Ben, which player are you looking forward to seeing tomorrow? A guy that I saw a lot of with the Des Moines Buccaneers this year, that being Shane Pinto. Started in Lincoln, ended up in Tri-City. He was a buck killer all year long. <laughs> Big body, very skilled for his size, moves the puck well, but also can just straight up finish. So he's a guy that's going to make whatever team he lands on. I think their fan base very happy. Well, last year, the USHL had 57 players selected in the draft. We've got nine down, so 49 to go if we want to break that record. All the action for round two and day two kicks off tomorrow at 12 p.m. Central. You can follow all the selections on ushl.com and follow the USHL on Twitter. For USHL TV, I'm Katie Gauze, joined by Ben Gislason and Jack Molesky. We'll see you tomorrow.